Well, hi again. It's Paul Feuerstein, still locked up in my room. Uh, my wife won't even let me out now. Uh, I, I love doing this because I get to see my friends who I don't usually, I see these people all the time at meetings and I miss them. And Tony Stefano, Tony, how are you, Tony? I haven't I'm seen good, you in a Paul. while. It's good to see you. It's good doing to well, see you. Doing well in the New York, the greater New York area. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, crazy here in the middle of everything. And um, I was telling someone the other day, I don't think I'm going to complain anymore when I get to go away for three days at a conference. Uh, <laughs> I'll, yeah, uh, I'll be looking forward to that. What's an airplane anyway? So, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, so one of the things that's happening is I'm sitting home and watching a zillion webinars on all sorts of things like, uh, you know, advanced techniques of implant planning and all this sort of thing. But there's a, there's a human part to what's going on. And we are all sitting here scratching our heads saying, wow. Do I still want to do this? I mean, you know, some some of my friends are my age and they're saying, you know, am I done? Should I just get out of this at this point here? And, and what can I do? What's what's over the rainbow? So uh, I know you have some ideas and just you know, tell me what you think. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Look, we don't know exactly how long this is going to go on for. And we also know that as dental professionals, uh, many of us have been doing this for 20, 30, 40 years or more. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not in the business of trying to tell people, well, it's, you know, time to get out of dentistry or anything like that because we're, <laughs> you know, we're really needed. But the truth of the matter is this has been a little bit of a wake up call. But to be honest, you know, there were already thousands and thousands of dentists that were starting to think about exit strategy and thinking about possibly um, either selling their practices because they're ready to retire or, um, Let's face it, uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, practices um, the last couple of years, it's been a seller's market. Um, people are getting more for their practices than they've ever gotten before. And there are a lot of reasons for that, which we don't have time to get into. But, you know, for some people, they want to continue practicing. Uh, and they also realize that administrating and running the business of the practice, and we see now with having to deal with all the regulations we have and dealing with the fact that you have to deal with marketing and HR and payroll and all the other stuff we have, you know, a lot of people don't want to continue to do that long term, but want to still practice. So, you know, there are a couple of things. The first thing is, um, you know, for those of you that are thinking about, well, I, I wanted to consider selling this year or maybe next year, but I don't know how this crisis will affect that. Um, one thing to think about is that, um, look, everybody across the board is going through the same thing. The numbers for dental practices everywhere in the country are going to be down for the next couple of months. And, and we know that um, if you've been thinking about selling, it might be a good idea for you right now to look and get at least an appraisal done. Because if you do that uh, now, first of all, you have the time to do it, so to speak. A lot of people are also in the middle of preparing for their taxes. So they were looking at their reports from last year and all that, but it really makes sense to go ahead and look at what happened, what my practice was worth pre-corona. Um, and I think there, you know, there are a lot of reasons for that as well, but one of them is just that, you know, when, if you're thinking about, about selling and the fact that it was a good uh, a buyer's market, a uh, seller's market up until now, a lot of the people who might be potential buyers, whether that be other dentists or DSOs, you know, they recognize that Corona hit and um, they'd be looking at numbers going up to, let's say, the end of February and appraisals would be done kind of pre-Corona and then there'd be some look at post-Corona. But it makes sense to have you have a pretty good idea of where you stand right now. And what, uh, this what, is the time uh, to look to do that. Yeah, what, what I don't think what a lot of dentists realize is how much you have to figure out I and mean, to, to, before you get this appraisal you have to get fill out like 40 pages of information you don't even think you don't even know what you don't know i mean what are the zip codes of the patients coming to the office how many new patients how many this and it's all sorts of information that the more you have the more you, have, you can make the practice look better and give make it more valuable yeah we can we know we've really streamlined i do hundreds of appraisals and uh um my company is really a we're really business intermediaries we're not brokers so to speak when it comes to practice but practice but we we can do an object of appraisal and we have it down pretty much an hour down to really being able to get what is needed information wise it's not really that overwhelming uh, but 
but we'll be able to take a look at what's needed to, you know, really analyze it from cash flow and also to, to look at it. There are points that you earn or not earn depending on a lot of the intangibles of a practice. And so really it's not as bad as people think it is, but um, because we know what, what is needed and what's, what well, I, needs I to be mean, looked at. I didn't mean it was bad. It's just that it's time consuming. And now what do I have? Yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Well, that's the biggest thing is, I mean, when you're practicing full time, if you're trying to get an appraisal done at the same time, you know, even with the streamlined process, it certainly uh, takes longer than expected. So, you know, it is a good idea to take a look at doing that now anyway, just to kind of know where you stand up until now, so to speak. And I think that's an important point. Um, and there are other reasons, again, you know, I can get into with people if they're interested in learning more about why they should look at it and you know what's going on how much how much has everything changed now that this hit and the fact that we are going to be down in collections should i be waiting or delaying you know um i understand those questions and they can be pretty easily answered but i i would urge you if you're thinking about it to take a look at getting the appraisal done now that's a great idea sometimes i mean i i, I when i was in school i found a practice that i was thinking of buying as it right out of dental school and we did an appraisal and the guy says wow i didn't know the practice was that good he says i'm not selling <laughs> so, well a lot of people you know paul a lot of people um think because they're they're either basing it on, on outdated formulas or somebody told them a colleague told them this is what people are getting in your area i can urge you that appraisals are not done just by slapping a percentage they're done by really analyzing two dentists in the same zip code. Um, while there are certain areas that certainly you get extra points because you're in a certain location, the truth of the matter is it's really based on your individual practice and your cash flow. And as you know, the guy next to you has is running a completely different practice. You could be collecting the same amount of money and the practices have completely different percentage of value worth. And I think it's important to bring that out because a lot of people are just – well, somebody told me this, and I, 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 it's not really the way it works. So we have we have a short time here, so I want to we, we, um, can we get to I'm gonna make sure everybody knows how to contact you for more information on that. But but what what can I do if I if I decide to leave the practice and wanted to do something on the next step? I mean, what what should I be looking to do other than working at a Seven Eleven or something? Yeah, no, well, you know, it's interesting. Many years ago, I mean, I've been a dentist for thirty something years. I practiced full time for twenty. Um, transitioned a little bit where I got involved with things like product development. I got involved with um, sales and marketing training and got involved with uh, practice transitions and all that stuff. And eventually I went full time into the business side of the industry. But, you know, about 12 years ago, um, um, I got together with a woman who's very prominent in the industry, Teresa Duncan. And uh, we were getting asked all the time by people, well, what else can we do besides clinical and or working in the office setting? And the truth is, again, you can, and many people uh, elect to practice part-time or full-time, but like someone like yourself, for instance, you do a lot of speaking, you do a lot of consulting, and uh, areas like that, uh, in addition to corporate positions and getting involved with other areas within the business side of the industry, there's, there's sales and there's writing and there's working with uh, different companies. Um, we put together a program that used to be a, only a two-day live course. We would do it once a year called Beyond the Operatory. And uh, of course, now with the um, pandemic hitting, we decided to do it as a one-day seminar, well, one-day webinar, excuse me, and we'll be doing that on April 29th. Oh. Um, and so it's called Beyond the Operatory. We are offering a little bit of a discount for the next few people that want to take a look at it. We'll cover everything that there is out there, all the different things, some things that you may have not have thought of while you practice, or if in fact you do want to get out of clinical for whatever reason completely, then um, we work with you on developing a game plan. And then if you need to make, get some introductions made, uh, we'll do that with either individuals or companies. And uh, that's part of what we do. It's really a unique program and it's been very well received. And um, great things about it. Yeah, I mean, so people have been asking really about it. So we're doing that on the 29th. Yeah, that's Teresa very well. She actually helped me do a webinar about uh, teledentistry and about coding. So, you know, that that's her expertise. Oh, Teresa's <laughs> incredible. I mean, she's done an amazing amount of you know, speaking, consulting, and she's the, really the industry's expert Absolutely. on insurance coding and all of that. Uh, so she's a great person to partner with. We, between the two of us, we've done just about everything there is to do out there, so <laughs> to speak. So, yeah. So, so we've, this is kind of a teaser to everybody. It's not to say, oh, what, what, wow. So how, how can people get in touch with you specifically? 
Um, we'll, we'll post this up, but what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, there's so a few things. If you're interested in, um, first of all, if you would just want information about a few things, um, you can email me at TonyDMD, T-O-N-Y-D-M-D at gmail.com. Um, you can go to beyondtheoperatory.com um, and learn about the webinar. Uh, there's a, a link there to, to uh, register. You can um, also, I mentioned before the appraisal, uh, we're doing a webinar as well, just a one hour free webinar on what is my practice worth now? Wow. And that's on Wednesday the 22nd between noon and 1 p.m. Eastern time. You can again, email me and I'll send you the link uh, to register for that as, as, as well. So there's a few different things that you can look at um, in terms of getting in, getting in touch and uh, finding out more. That's great, Tony. You know what? I wish I had another half an hour, so maybe we'll get you back again. We'll go over some more details, but for now, Everybody stay safe. You, Tony, your wife, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Same with you, Paul. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for having me.